San Antonio starts right now. Joseph R. Biden Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida has received 232 votes. Breaking news overnight, Congress formally okays President-elect Joe Biden's Electoral College victory following a pro-Trump mob's assault on the U.S. Capitol. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a cold 48 degrees, colder than it was yesterday morning, and cooler temperatures to come. We'll check in with Mike right now. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is January 7th. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're going to get a check of weather and traffic coming up in just a few moments. But first, it is official. Joe Biden will be the 46th president of the United States. The former vice president's victory certified by Congress shortly after 2.30 this morning. The House and Senate rejected objections to dismiss Biden's electoral votes from Georgia and Pennsylvania. This announcement comes hours after pro-Trump rioters broke into the U.S. Capitol. Now, president Trump posted a statement to his Facebook page reacting to Congress's certification of Biden saying, quote, in part, even though I totally disagree with the outcome of the election and the facts bear me out, nevertheless, there will be an orderly transition on the 20th of January. CNN's Whitney Wild now has more from Washington. For even in the wake of unprecedented violence and vandalism at this Capitol, the elected representatives of the people of the United States have assembled again. The counting of the electoral college votes resuming Wednesday night. We will not be kept out of this chamber by thugs, mobs, or threats. After rioters tore through the pristine halls of the Capitol, sowing chaos and leaving an ominous message right on the desk of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. This assault is just that. It shows the weakness of those who have had to show through violence what their message was. The attempted coup is the first time the U.S. Capitol has been breached since the British attacked and burned the building in August of 1814. Arrests have been made, pipe bombs have been found outside the DNC, RNC and the Capitol, and a woman has died after being shot inside the Capitol. I just remember like the sense of shock and sorrow that somebody just died and didn't not need to die because she didn't have a weapon. She wasn't being violent in any way. Riot authorities have moved in on the mobs, pushing them away from the Capitol. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild reporting. Other elected leaders sounding off following yesterday's riot in Washington, one of those being U.S. Senator Ted Cruz, condemning that group or groups that breached the Capitol grounds. Our Stephen Cavazos is live this morning with the senator's reaction. Stephen. Having some sort of audio difficulties, we will try to get back to Stephen and hear what Senator Ted Cruz had to say coming up right now. I think it's best we transition over to meteorologist Mike Ostrage and a look at your weather authority forecast. Good morning, everybody. And yeah, once that uh, front moved on through and everything cleared out yesterday, now get ready because uh, as I uh, push out this morning, you're going to get a lot of use out of your coat for about the next week at least. So got kind of a cold period coming on in here and uh, it is, well, it's live cam is, is just kind of dark out there this morning, uh, 48 degrees here in town. So we're not down to normal yet, but we are still going to be uh, cooling down for the next couple of hours and mountain cedar. I don't know if you saw it, but wow, it went up yesterday compared to the day before 20, almost 22,000. And that doesn't even take into account the front that moved through yesterday. We had a little breeze uh, out there and it's going to be breezier today. So that's just going to kind of, I think, add to and continue to shake up the, uh, the mountain cedar trees. And I think we're going to be dropping down right around normal low this morning, clear, chilly, and then wind is going to start to pick up a little bit more out of the uh, northwest today. 62 for a high temperature, normal high temperature. Uh, we won't even be hitting that for the next couple of days. Then we've got uh, some more 
rain down the road later on in the weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Samuel King, good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Uh, things are pretty quiet on, on the roads right now. You see a lot of green on the map, and that's a good thing. We do have some construction wrapping up here on 410 between uh, Marbach and Military, but you can see it's not really affecting travel times at this hour, that construction wrapping up at 5 o'clock. And here's a look at Transguide 410 at Fredericksburg. Uh, looking good this morning as well as I-10 at the Y, uh, smooth sailing, Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. A man is dead after he was hit by a car last night. It happened around 8 p.m. on Hunt Lane south of Marbuck Road on the city's west side. Police say the man was walking along Hunt Lane when that crash happened, and the driver told police that person could not stop in time. Officers say the driver is not expected to face any charges right now because that person remained on the scene. Coronavirus cases continue to rise in Bear County. Another 2,000 cases announced in the latest report, bringing the seven-day average to more than 1,500 over 24 hours. There were also four more deaths reported. The number of hospitalizations continues to hit new records. 1,341 COVID patients hospitalized, 383 in ICU, 199 are on ventilators. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a suspect in a homicide investigation. Back on December 15th, police found 62-year-old Michael Brodus dead from multiple gunshot wounds at his home in the 300 block of Belmont. Now, investigators say they do not have any suspects at this time. If you have any information on the case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward for information leading to an arrest. Right now it is 436, 48 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a first look at the workings behind Operation Warp Speed, which continues to ensure the COVID-19 vaccine is distributed to the nation. Next, the CDC releasing updated numbers on how many people could succumb to the virus by the end of the month. And a little colder this morning at 48 degrees. And uh, get used to it because it will get colder throughout the weekend. But this afternoon, we may expect some sunshine to explain it all. We'll have Mike Osterhitch after the break. Welcome back. Just about 440, we're going to try this again. Elected leaders sounding off following yesterday's riots in Washington, D.C. One of those being Senator Ted Cruz condemning the groups that breached the Capitol. Stephen Cavazos is live this morning with more. Stephen. Well, Mark, as we were saying earlier, those words are despicable and an act of terrorism. Again, those are the words of Senator Ted Cruz using to describe yesterday's riots at the nation's capital. Now, while the senator did call for unity and peace, he also added, added quote, we must defend our constitution and rule of law, end quote. Now, in a statement sent out earlier this morning, Senator Ted Cruz did say an electoral commission was called yesterday to give Americans confidence in November's election. He said it was the right thing to do and that the debate in the two houses of Congress is the proper way to resolve political differences. He also said the Department of Justice should prosecute everyone who was involved in, quote, these brazen acts of violence, end quote. Senator Cruz did thank the men and women of the Capitol and other law enforcement agencies who responded to yesterday's riots. Now, here at home, Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller will hold a small prayer service following yesterday's riots at the nation's capital. That'll be happening here at the San Fernando Cathedral later today at 1. Reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. Well, multiple sources say President Trump has banned my, Vice President Mike Pence's chief of staff from the West Wing. Mark Short was seen on the White House campus on Wednesday, but in the Eisenhower Executive Office building where Pence's office is, he was also seen on the Hill. Short did not confirm or deny whether he'd been banned from the West Wing. He also declined to say if he planned to resign from his post. Federal health officials are now predicting a higher death toll from the coronavirus this month. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has released a higher projection for January. The CDC's ensemble now forecasts up to 438,000 people could succumb to COVID-19 complications by January 30th. That's 14,000 more deaths than forecasted on December 30th. As it stands now, nearly 360,000 people have died in the U.S. from COVID-19 since the start of the pandemic. Maybe a sign of things to come in the U.S. Any traveler entering Canada by air is now required to show a negative COVID test conducted no more than 20, uh, rather 72 hours before departure. The country's transport minister says passengers will not be allowed to board planes bound for Canada without one. 
Another measure of control is a 14 day quarantine ar upon arriving in Canada. That rule remains in place even after a negative test result is shown. The new testing requirement does not allow for rapid tests. Only results from a PCR test will be accepted. And time now is 442 and 48 degrees. Still ahead, a first look at how Operation Warp Speed continues to try to make sure COVID-19 vaccines will be distributed. And welcome back, it's 445. In today's GMA First Look, ABC's Kaylee Hartung gets an inside look at Operation Warp Speed. In this morning's GMA First Look, up close with the frontline heroes fighting COVID-19. It, it looked like a bomb went off. ABC News getting a first-hand look at a day in the life of Los Angeles EMT workers. Their ambulances stacked up outside overflowing hospitals as they wait for beds to open up. How long have you had to wait with patients in this parking lot today? Five, six hours, yeah. but yesterday I was at San Dimas Hospital, 17 hours in the back of a rig with a semi-critical patient. I have limited resources and if they're really going downhill, there may not even be a spot to put them in the hospital. I was actually deployed to Hurricane Rita and Hurricane Katrina, and this is by far the worst disaster I've ever been involved in. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more from these first responders, plus the very latest on the federal government's National calls to Guard speed up vaccinations. Really With your GMA First Look, uh, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Angeles. Well, morning takes a turn when a homeowner is forced to become a life-saving hero all while still in her bathrobe. CNN's Jeremy Roth has that story and more. Watch a good Samaritan in a bathrobe save an entire family from a house fire. Carolyn Polish sprang into action one morning when she saw smoke pouring from her neighbor's house. Inside, a family of six was asleep. Get out! And all I could think of was the kids. Nicole Selgado and her husband David quickly got their four children out of the home, which reportedly was unlivable after suffering significant damage. We didn't hear anything, we didn't smell anything. The firefighters told us that if it would have been five more minutes and that roof would have came down with us in the house. Thankfully, Polish, who is a career nurse, was there to save the day. The Salgados say they now consider her part of the family. She saved our life. There's no, there's no other way I can repay her. While we're on the subject of heroes, a mural honoring the heroic officers of the Nashville bombing has been completed and now adorns a business that was directly affected. A bomb in an RV was detonated Christmas Day after warnings were broadcast from the vehicle. The six officers saved countless lives by rushing to clear the area ahead of the blast. More than 40 businesses were damaged, including the Hard Rock Cafe where the work now hangs. Organizers plan to give the mural a permanent home once repairs are completed. Once the window is fixed, they're actually going to hang it up inside and frame it forever so that the heroes can always be remembered. For take a look at this, I'm Jeremy Roth. All right now it's 447 on your Thursday morning. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Samuel King. How's it looking this morning? Okay, we do have a bit of a slowdown here at I-10 at Hildebrand, but looks like things are uh, improving by the second there. So that should get on your way there in just a moment. Uh, we also have this construction again later today. This is a, a 35 at FM 306 at the overpass. You're going to be repairing the crash cushion again there. So that's closure from 9 this morning till 3 this afternoon. And taking a look at travel times now coming into downtown San Antonio from New Braunfels, 26 minutes, 30 minutes uh, from I on I-10 from Seguin. And taking a look at Transguide this morning, 281 at the quarry, looking fine, as does 281 at Grayson, folks. Thank you, Samuel. Mike, I can hear that wind whipping last night. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> it was breezy overnight. It's kind of settled a little bit, but the wind's going to start to pick up more later on this afternoon. You know what that's going to do to mountain cedar trees. Yesterday, of course, we had some of the strongest storms off to the east, and this was the, uh, the leftovers after that storm. And uh, we're not going to see any clouds for the next uh, couple of days. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise, beautiful sunset later on today. And uh, obviously nothing showing up on that, uh, that picture right there in live cam. Look at the dew point temperature change, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. Of course, we had those higher humidity readings yesterday, and that was kind of setting the stage for some of that rain, although officially out there at the airport only picked up a one one hundredth of an inch of rain, but there was a lot more off to the east. But then that dry air moved in here, so these dew points have dropped down. 
20, 30, almost 35 degrees, so much drier air, and that's allowing temperatures to uh, drop down. We've got this breeze coming in here out of the uh, north uh, to northwest, and it's going to stay very low as far as the humidity is concerned for the next uh, couple of days. But notice how the winds do start to try to shift around out of the east to southeast a little bit more. So we'll get some more humidity coming in here uh, during the day on Saturday. That's going to help with cloud cover on Saturday. Then we are going to be seeing uh, some rain chances moving in here overnight Saturday into Sunday. There's all the left over storms the past 24 hours that move on out of here and uh, there's nothing upstream for the next couple of days. That's why today tomorrow going to be just spectacular cold mornings, even colder tomorrow. We get kind of a the, the cold air is going to sort of continue to ease on in here, if you will, in the overnight hours. And so uh, we'll make it to the low 60s today, but only the 50s tomorrow and colder in the morning as well as Saturday morning. Then we have the next disturbance, which is going to be trying to slide on in here, and that's going to give us the chance for some rain. Looks like a fairly decent shot overnight into Sunday. And of course, you see way up there at the top, all the purple and blue. There is some cold enough air and computer models are still indicating a little bit of mixed precipitation. This is the same one been showing the past couple of days, and it almost doesn't look quite as aggressive. Um, maybe the coldest air won't come down as far south. But there will be a couple of uh, snowflakes, maybe a little bit of sleep mixed in with some of the uh, precipitation up in the hill country. That'll be even through the day on Sunday. So it looks like Sunday is going to definitely be on the, the damp and chilly side. So grilled cheese and soup on Sunday, and then we uh, clear on out to start off next week. But we get another reinforcing shot of cold air coming in here. So yeah, it is going to definitely stay on the, the January side, if you will. 51 degrees today at noon and lots of sunshine I'm going for uh, 62 for a high temperature later on today and tomorrow, even colder in the morning, 35 degrees up to 57. So definitely keep a coat handy. Clouds we will start off with some sunshine early, early Saturday. Clouds increase and then we have the chance of rain on Sunday and maybe a little bit of mixture up to the north. Then we clear on out and stay pretty chilly next week as well. Does your north include uh, northern Bear County at all? Prob is it gonna Probably not. Okay. As it's looking right now, it'd be a little bit further north of that. But, you know, it just, it's just a couple of days away. See how that line kind of edges because the line sort of moved back up a little bit with that, that one computer model right now. So. We don't like accumulations, but watching no, the snow fly is fun, right? It's yeah. It's exciting for us. Yeah. And, and with the rain, <laughs> it would be just kind of wet. Oh, you know, okay. wet, wet flakes or a little bit of sleep mixed in. So, But okay. a true January. Yeah, the temperatures... Again, grilled cheese and soup on Sunday. Very good. Thank you, Mike. 452, 48 degrees. And still ahead, new details on a brand new game show featuring several former Jeopardy! champions. Here are a lot of numbers. Uh, pick three, five, six, three, fireball eight. Daily four, number seven, two, three, one, fireball five. Cash five, six, 14, 24, 29, 35. And Lotto, Texas, six, 14, 17, 32, 44, 45. And your Powerball numbers, 1, 20, 22, 60, 66, Powerball 3, Power Play 3. Good luck. new game show featuring some Jeopardy celebrities is premiering tonight on ABC. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It's time to start the chase. The new game show features former Jeopardy champs Ken Jennings, Brad Rutter, and James Holtzauer in a battle of wits against contestants who win cash if they beat the big three at trivia. If not, they go home empty-handed. And Holtzauer tells me he doesn't feel bad if he sends people packing. I believe in meritocracy. You know, if they win, great. Then, you know, spend the money with pleasure. If they don't win, you know, it's hard to feel bad for people who have this great shot and they blow it. The Chase premieres tonight on ABC alongside another new game show, The Hustler and Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Who is Katie Couric? Multiple reports that she'll be the next interim host of Jeopardy! following Ken Jennings, and she'll be behind the podium for a week. The final show featuring Alex Trebek as host airs Friday, and the episodes featuring Jennings start Monday.
Neil Young, the latest classic rocker to sell at least part of his song catalog, selling 50% to Hypnosis Songs, which Tuesday announced a deal for Lindsey Buckingham's works. The move comes after Bob Dylan and Stevie Nicks announced similar deals with different companies, worth a reported $300 million bucks for Dylan and $100 million bucks for Nicks. No word on the terms for the Young deal. And back to Katie Couric, it's her birthday. The journalist and producer is 64 today. While Hawkeye, actor Jeremy Renner, is 50. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News. 457, 48 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we'll have the latest on what lawmakers did overnight following the chaos at the Capitol. And a first look at Samsung's new TV that is made to mimic a painting on the wall. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A violent attack on the U.S. Capitol to stop lawmakers from ratifying Joe Biden's win in the presidential election. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details coming up. And a big change in the weather as expected. Much cooler this morning, back down into the uh, mid 40s or so. We'll talk to Mike coming up. Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is January 7th. We're going to get a check of traffic and weather coming up in just a few moments. But first, those extraordinary scenes that have folded on Capitol Hill yesterday after pro-Trump demonstrators breached security barriers and entered the building. Four people are now dead and 52 arrested. Let's go ahead and go to Faith Obube right now for the latest. A good morning. Much calmer in D.C. right now, but many are waking up horrified by what happened here in the last 24 hours, but encouraged that democracy prevailed. Being Overnight, a joint session of Congress ratifying the Electoral College votes in the presidential election. The move certifying President-elect Joe Biden's decisive win as he prepares to take office in less than two weeks. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be the president and the vice president according to the ballots that have been given to us. And it comes after a tumultuous day at the U.S. Capitol, a symbol of U.S. democracy attacked by violent pro-Trump mobs and left in disarray. The image is hard to watch. Demonstrators scaling walls, breaking through security barriers, smashing windows and storming restricted areas of the U.S. Capitol, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office. The Trump supporters forcing lawmakers to take cover in fear of their lives. Pictures show armed Capitol Police outnumbered, guns drawn and barricading doors as the chaos unfolded. D.C. police telling ABC News one woman and two men suffered medical emergencies and later died. Another woman shot and killed during a standoff inside the Capitol. The chaos forcing lawmakers to break from what should have been a quiet day, ratifying the Electoral College votes in the presidential election. Instead, as the joint session of Congress convened, President Trump urging his supporters during a rally to head to the Capitol. You'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. As the supporters breached a building, multiple sources tell ABC News Trump rejected calls to bring in the National Guard, only signing off after White House officials intervened for the sake of the country. Three people inside the White House resigning over the violent display. And now some talk, according to ABC News sources, among cabinet members to remove Trump himself from office. Lawmakers from both sides of the political aisle, shaken but undeterred, returning to the chamber overnight to finish their work. Even some some Trump allies dropping their objections to certifying Biden electors. I will stand with you tonight. That is to transfer power in a peaceful way. And despite the violence overnight, some House Republicans objected to certifying Electoral College votes from swing states. Joe Biden won, but those efforts again failed. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. We continue to hear more from elected leaders after yesterday's riots in the nation's capital. Stephen Cavazos is live downtown with reaction from local leaders. Good morning, Stephen. Well, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. One of those local leaders being Bear County Sheriff Javier Salasad. Now, he called yesterday's acts at the Capitol disheartening 
but wanted to let people here in Bear County know the same thing will not happen here. Now, in a statement sent out, the sheriff did say he wanted to assure that all proactive measures uh, to safeguard Bear County facilities and processes are implemented. Now, other leaders like Senator Jose Menendez, who has been serving District 26 since 2015, condemned yesterday's riots. In his statement, he said, quote, if you love this nation, you must speak out against the criminal acts at our nation's capital, end quote. Now, here at San Fernando Cathedral, a small prayer service will be held later today at 1 following yesterday's acts in D.C. Reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephen. 504, time to check weather. I know. It was pretty windy. We brought all our plants in, Mike, and I guess there's sunshine today? Oh, yeah, plenty of sunshine today. We had a lot of it, uh, at least uh, in the western, about two-thirds of our viewing area yesterday. And if you want to bring plants in, yeah, keep them in overnight the next few nights because we are going to be very close to freezing, obviously, in the, the hill country. You're going to want to bring them in. We're at 47 right now, so we're not quite down to a normal reading, but we will continue to cool off uh, throughout the course of the next few hours. And look at the dew point, 27. The air really, really dried out overnight, and we're not going uh, too far up from here. We'll make it up to 62 later on today, so about a normal high temperature. The aquifer did uh, drop down one tenth of a foot in the past 24 hours, and I don't know if you want to see this next graphic or not. Mountain Cedar went up yesterday, almost 22,000. That didn't even take into account the breezy conditions we had overnight. And then we got another uh, breezy afternoon in store today. Take a look at uh, some of the temperatures right now. And we've got uh, 47 degrees here in town, mid 30s in parts of the hill country. Like I said, I think we continue to uh, cool down a few more notches in the next few hours. And uh, boy, once again, that mountain cedar is just sky high out there. And throughout the rest of the morning, we are going to be seeing temperatures drop down to about 40. And like I said, we warm up nicely, almost normal temperatures on both ends of the scale today. But it is going to be on the cool side. We'll talk about those rain chances coming up later on in the weekend. Time saver traffic right now. Samuel. King, anything big going on, sir? Nothing big going on at the moment, Mike. Things looking uh, pretty good here in San Antonio. Uh, we do have this uh, construction again on I-10 between La Quintera Parkway and Wildfire Road. Uh, the HOV lanes and some of the outside main lanes will be closed as they uh, do some clearing out there. And taking a look at some travel times this morning, 26 minutes if you're coming in on 35 from New Braunfels, 24 minutes uh, on I-10 from Bernie and 17 minutes on I-35 from Lytle this morning and trans guy 35 at St. Mary's looking good as does I 10 at Callahan guys back over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Friends, family and church members have rallied around four children who survived a crash Sunday that killed their parents. The youngest and the oldest ages five and 16 were hospitalized. The family's bishop says all of them are in his words deeply shaken physically and emotionally. Their father, 54-year-old Craig Smith, worked at Fort Sam Houston. He and his wife were taken so suddenly, the bishop says, that the family is faced with unforeseen expenses. I'm confident that we'll be able to raise funds sufficient to help meet those needs now and in the future. Holotas police say it appears a family pulled out of a Dairy Queen in front of an oncoming pickup truck. The crash is still under investigation. They say including the possibility of speed might have been a factor. But right now, no, there are no charges. 507, 47 degrees. And still ahead, a look at how the major social media companies are dealing with President Donald Trump's accounts following the chaos at the Capitol. And next, a closer look at how the fashion industry has changed due to pandemic restrictions. And taking a look outside with live cam. Okay, it's only 47 degrees for now. We are going to brace for colder mornings coming this weekend. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. Just about 5-11, the pandemic has impacted all industries financially and how they approach consumers. But how has the fashion industry been changed? Our Sarah Costa explains how the fashion industry has been impacted and how it might have been changed forever. When compared to frontline service industries fighting to keep people alive and fed, the fashion industry has taken a backseat during this pandemic. So what does this mean for the fashion world in the future? 
The pandemic pushed pause on the fashion industry across the globe. It's an industry that is both a creative mecca and one of the world's most significant fiscal heavyweights. The industry deterioration would see a big impact on global economy, furloughing or causing unemployment status to millions of artists, designers, seamstresses and more. Forbes claims that store closures and down sales led to Western fashion brands canceling over $2.8 billion in orders from Bangladeshi suppliers. At least 1.2 million workers in Bangladesh are said to have been impacted by these cancellations, according to Forbes. Dozens of luxury brands have stepped up to the plate, like Tiffany & Company, Prada, and Dulce & Cabana, all rallying and donating to hospitals and those at the center of the crisis. Fashion weeks across the globe were either canceled or went virtual. Physical stores closed at the start of the pandemic, and some companies' brick and mortar stores may not recover. In the luxury sector, brands are predicted to experience a $10 billion decline in luxury sales, and overall, the industry could lose $30 to $40 billion in sales. Back to you. Time right now, 512, 47 degrees. And still ahead, how Twitter and Facebook are reacting to President Donald Trump's response to the chaos at the Capitol. Everybody else's trash could be treasure uh, for dedicated high school students. Up next, more about a special scholarship that aims to keep Texas roadways clean and promotes higher education and community service. Chances are you have some questions right now. Here are a couple answers. Lysol disinfectant spray and disinfecting wipes together can be used on over 100 surfaces and kill up to 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria. Unfortunately, we can't answer every question you have right now. Lysol, what it takes to protect. The new MyWW Plus is our most holistic weight loss program ever. You can choose any workout you want to fit with your time frame. There are a ton of zero point foods that I love. I never feel restricted. The new MyWW Plus. Kickstart your weight loss with the WW Triple Play. My auntie called me. She said, uncle's had a heart attack. I needed him to be here. Your heart isn't just yours. Protect it with Bayer Aspirin. Be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. 516 major social media outlets have taken steps against President Donald Trump's accounts. ABC's Alex Brashe has details in Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, social media cracks down on the president. Twitter logged Trump's account for 12 hours, saying his tweets encouraged additional violence amid the chaos in the Capitol. Facebook and Instagram blocked him for 24 hours, and YouTube took down one of his videos. Samsung's new Frame TV is now available. It's meant to look like a work of art when you're not using it. The frame is less than an inch thick and ranges in size from 32 to 75 inches. The biggest version costs nearly $3,000. And finally, Elon Musk is almost in Jeff Bezos' rear view mirror. Musk is now $3 billion behind the Amazon founder for the title of world's wealthiest person. The Tesla CEO's net worth is now $181 billion dollars. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Every year, about 362 million pieces of litter accumulate on Texas roads. That's why every year a special scholarship is available for Texas high school seniors to help make a difference in our great state. And here's what you need to know about the Don't Mess With Texas Scholarship Contest. Applications are now available for the 2021 Don't Mess With Texas Scholarship Contest. This contest recognizes Texas high school seniors who are taking an active role in litter prevention in their school or community. The contest is open to any Texas high school senior currently attending public, private, or home school. You also need to plan to attend an accredited college or university in the fall of 2021. The contest will award a total of $9,000 in scholarships to three winners this coming May. Becky Ozuna, the program administrator for the Don't Mess With Texas program, says they are looking for students who are developing creative solutions to keeping Texas litter free. All you have to do is visit don'tmesswithtexas.org. Applications are due on March 31st by 5 p.m. And just remember, you can be fined $500 every time you litter in Texas. And if you toss 
uh, weighs more. What you toss weighs more than five pounds. You may have to pay up to two thousand dollars. It's not just cigarette butts, but other trash. Things like apple cores and banana peels. They are considered litter too. You may not have known that. Yeah. So food for thought. Mm, food for thought. <laughs> when it comes to that. Let's check traffic right now. It is five eighteen. What's the latest, Samuel? Oh, good morning, everyone. Things are uh, looking uh, okay right now here. Let's look at Bandera Road between uh, 1604 and 410. 11 minutes from 1604 to 410. 10 minutes going uh, the other way. Some delays building out there a little bit this morning. And, and a viewer called and asked us about these travel times we show occasionally every morning, like the 30 minutes right now from Seguin. They're like, well, where do we measure that from? Well, it comes into downtown San Antonio. That's where they're going. Uh, but where the... Uh, where they're coming from, like New Braunfels or Seguin or Bernie, uh, depend, they're usually at some point outside of town where you catch the highway. So it's not necessarily uh, downtown. So we thought that was a good question, so I figured I'd address it on the air as well. And taking a look at Trans Guide, 35 at St. Mary's looks okay, as does 90 at Zarzamora, guys. Very good. Thank you, Samuel. Okay, I learned something new. I didn't know apple cores were considered trash. Mm. I, being, I didn't, actually, yeah. I didn't either. I thought being an apple, it just, you know, mm -hmm. well, deteriorated. Yeah, you think so. a critter's going to get it or it's going to yeah. biodegrade anyway, right? <laughs> right. Like people just toss it, you know, and mm -hmm. you think it's just going to. Not, not that I've ever done that. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> but it's not five pounds. You're good. Just put it in a bag, Mike. <laughs> exactly. Hi. <laughs> uh, anyway, what a beautiful picture. And again, off to the east, we had uh, some pretty good storms with the piece after the storms. That's a great looking shot there. And uh, get ready for some gorgeous weather today. In this picture, now well, not quite yet, but uh, of course, we will eventually start seeing the glow of the uh, morning sunrise. And we've got we're going to have some beautiful blue skies today as well, because water vapor, you know, after that, uh, that front moved on through and we got the really, really dry air yesterday and still with this darker shade of gray on this map and this shows the water vapor or the lack of water vapor moisture aloft in the atmosphere and so that's why we're going to have those intense vivid blue skies today and uh, as far as anything going on the next couple of days nothing out there we will have a few clouds well off to the east of us and maybe you know one or two kind of scooching by here and there and uh, plenty of sunshine throughout the day tomorrow a, a cloud or two then we get into Saturday and that's when we're going to start to see the clouds really start to kind of move back on in here. Now, what's interesting is we do have a, a chance for some rain late Saturday into Sunday, but we're not seeing a huge return of moisture around here with these dew point temperatures only getting up into the mid 40s and then staying down on the lower side going into uh, the first part of next week. So what we have going on is, first of all, there's the low that brought the front through yesterday, gave us a uh, rain around the area. Now we get into the somewhat northwesterly flow, and so that's going to keep things on the cooler side today, about a normal high temperature. Then we get sort of a little extra shove of cool air coming in here, and that's going to knock temperatures only in the upper 50s for highs tomorrow as well as on Saturday. But also on Saturday, the next low is going to start to work its way in here. That's going to pump in some more moisture, so that's going to help with the cloud cover. And how close this thing comes is the really determining factor as to what sort of precipitation we see. You know, we've been talking all week long that there's going to be a mix of uh, some snow, maybe a little bit of sleet in uh, parts of the hill country on Sunday. That's still the situation, but it almost looks like this won't be quite as far south. Um, and as far as here in Bear County, it's not looking like we're going to see anything as far as any mixed precipitation on Sunday. It's just going to be kind of a wet and cold day. And then in behind that, we stay at these northwesterly flow and uh, actually stay on the cool side and get another reinforcing shot of cooler air next week. So it is going to be staying pretty January-ish, if that's a word. It is now throughout next week. It's 57 degrees today at noon, sunny skies. High temperature today, going to make it up to 62, normal high. And then we get that extra kind of push of some cooler air in here. So we get down to 35 tomorrow morning. 57 uh, for a high temperature tomorrow. By the way, it is going to be on the breezy side again today. So you know that's going to give those mountain cedar trees a nice, another nice good shake because with the count of 22,000. Hey, we can still go higher than that. Probably will. And uh, cloudy skies on Saturday, Sunday, that chance for some rain may be mixed up to the north. I mean, how long do you hold your breath as you walk out the door, right? <laughs> no kidding. I don't And it seems like this year, every once in a while, you get that extra surge of mountain cedar and just right here, it's like, yeah. it just feels yeah. like you're dizzy that, or something. That so. video the viewer sent in was yeah. really telling. Gotcha. Well, I can feel it today. Thank you, Mike. 523, 47 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, why actress Claire Dunn did not want to star in her latest movie, plus new music from Leslie Odom Jr.
Lottery numbers pick three, five, six, three, Fireball eight, daily four, seven, two, three, one, Fireball five. And looking at cash five, we have six, 14, 24, 29, 35. And Lotto Texas, we have six, 14, 17, 32, 44, 45. And Powerball, so nobody won Powerball. That's up to 470 million. Those numbers won 20, 22, 60, 66, Powerball three, Power Play three, and Megas at 490 million. Good luck, guys. Five twenty six in the spotlight this morning. Let's turn to Tinseltown for some movie and music news. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. What is the point of a house if I have no kids to put in it? Claire Dunn worked for years on the script for herself about a homeless mother trying to care for her children, but the actress didn't see herself in the starring role. No, not at the start because I just didn't have any screen experience and I was quite practical minded at the time. I was just thinking about getting it funded. So I kept emailing it to Irish actresses and of course, typical of lovely Irish women, they kept writing back and saying, why don't why don't you play this? Herself premieres Friday on Prime Video. Well, I think Roosevelt understood that the power of this was in less being more. Ken Burns is getting a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Professional Photographers of America. Burns is known for using still photographs in his documentaries, such as the Civil War, baseball, jazz, and the National Park's America's Best Idea. Now is the new song by Leslie Odom Jr. from One Night in Miami. Odom plays legendary singer Sam Cooke in the film and channels a bit of Cooke in the original song. Speak Now is out now. The film and the soundtrack debut January 15th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Now just about 528, 47 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, COVID-19 still poses a serious threat to the U.S. We're going to have details on a new variant of that virus. Plus a breakdown of when you can expect to see that second stimulus check pop up in your bank account. And why taking a cruise may not be an option anymore for your next vacation. Good morning to you. We've made it to Thursday. It is January 7th. Yes, we did. Thanks for joining us. And I hope you brought all your plants in. And I was just noticing that we brought our wreath in, but maybe I should keep it in because, you know, Christmas is over. <laughs> No longer needed out there anymore. <laughs> well, yesterday being, you know, the epiphany was the day you're supposed to, the last day of Christmas. Right. Some of us didn't get around to taking the decorations down yet, so. Mm, I'm there with you, Mike. Is that okay? Okay, good. So we're in the same boat together. Anyway, a beautiful sunrise in store today. We've got a lot of clear skies. That front moved through yesterday and uh, got rid of all the humidity. It's really pleasant out there. Now, as far as bringing plants in, we don't have any widespread freezes this morning. Now, the next couple of days, you're going to definitely want to uh, think about bringing your plants in or covering them, something like that. Except 47 degrees right now. 27 is at the dew point. We've got that wind out of the northwest. And and uh, I think we'll still drop down, though, with those clear skies and uh, very dry air. But the wind keeps things stirred up a little bit. Like I said, I think we drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours. And even out in Kerrville, 37 degrees, 41 Rock Springs, 40 at Fredericksburg. So again, not the widespread freeze, but <laughs> the coldest is yet to come. Mountain Cedar, ridiculously high yesterday. And I would venture a guess it's going to be going even higher because that didn't even take into account the front that moved through and the windy conditions that we've had late yesterday and overnight. And then we've got more windy conditions even uh, later on this afternoon. So you, it's inevitable with the, uh, the heart of the Mountain Cedar season. Sunny, beautiful today, gorgeous day. Normal temperatures, the low and the high up in the low 60s later on today. Colder start tomorrow. We get to kind of a little push of an extra push of colder air and then we're going to be staying cold, but still beautiful. So we stay uh, only in about the mid to upper 50s tomorrow. Then we go into the weekend. It is going to be cold, cloudy, some rain on Sunday. And yeah, some of that is going to be mixed up in the northern portions of the hill country and then still going to stay cold after that. So we're going to get a lot of use out of those winter coats. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Samuel King, what's going on on the road, sir? Uh, things looking uh, pretty quiet on the roads at the moment uh, this morning. Uh, we will have this construction later today. 
uh, in New Braunfels. One lane of 35 at FM 306 will be closed from 9 to 3 again, so that's something to watch out for later today. On the other side of the region, let's look at uh, I-10 from Bernie. 25 minutes to downtown San Antonio right now. 25 minutes if you're heading the other way. Now inside 1604, uh, things also looking good there. 13 minutes um, 1604 to downtown, 11 minutes the other way. And looking at Transguide right now, 410 at Fredericksburg, uh, looking fine uh, this morning, as well as I-10 at the Y mark. It's official. Joe Biden will be the 46th president of the United States. The former vice president's victory was certified by Congress shortly around 2.30 this morning. This announcement comes hours after pro-Trump rioters broke into the U.S. Capitol complex. The confirmation process is usually ceremonial, but the security breach halted action for several hours. Republicans and Democrats both blasted the protesters who attacked the Capitol, while some of the officials blamed President Trump for inciting the rioters. The post-holiday COVID-19 surge continues and vaccines are slowly rolling out. But now health officials say a new threat has been identified in South Africa. CNN's John Lawrence reports. The United States' battle against COVID-19 is far from over. It's not a home run yet because we don't really have the kinds of drugs where you give it that can stop the virus in its tracks. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's ensemble forecast projects as many as 438,000 people in the U.S. could die from COVID-19 by the end of the month. Some Nevada funeral homes are running out of space to store bodies and are using refrigerated trailers. It's unfortunate. Um, it's something that I never uh, would ever have believed in my career. I would ever have to, to be dealing with this. CDC officials say a variant of the virus, first found in the UK, has infected at least 52 people in the US. What it does, according to the Brits, is that it makes it easier for the virus to spread from person to person. So it is a virus that is in, in many respects more transmissible. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, is also concerned about another version of the virus, first identified in South Africa, which may lessen the effectiveness of COVID-19 antibody treatments. It is a little bit more complicated because some of those mutations might have a negative impact on the efficacy of some of the monoclonal antibodies that are used. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The Dow reached a record high Wednesday amid chaos at the Capitol. Values dropped slightly when protests got out of hand. Investors remained mostly unfazed. Instead, they were focused on the Senate runoff in Georgia. That will help President-elect Joe Biden's economic agenda and increase, increase the likelihood of more stimulus money coming from Washington. That optimism outweighed political unrest that Wall Street doesn't see as impacting long-term profitability. And Arizona's Grand Canyon may have met its match, and it's not even on this planet. NASA released this photo of a canyon on Mars, the largest canyon in our solar system. It stretches over 2,500 miles across the Martian equator and is seven miles deep. According to NASA, if on Earth, this valley would span from New York City to San Francisco. <laughs> it's pretty big. Scientists at the University of Arizona took it with a special camera called HiRISE, the most powerful camera ever sent to another planet. That's massive. That's hard to imagine here. <laughs> I mean, that's, that, that's as wide as a continent, essentially. Yeah, pretty much like America. Good yeah. Lord. 536, <laughs> 47 degrees. And still ahead, at least one major airline making a change on its flights headed into the nation's capital to protect passengers and crew members. A second round of stimulus payments are on the way. So when and how will uh, those who are eligible receive the money? We will explain. And taking a look outside with live cam, do not be surprised by these temperatures. I know it's a lot different than yesterday morning, but we will see some sun today. We're gonna to check in for all your weather details after the break. A second round of stimulus payments are on the way. So when will eligible individuals and families receive the Mondays? Money, CNN's Mandy Gaither explains. The motion to concur is agreed to. 
In a sweeping pandemic aid bill passed just before Christmas, Congress approved $600 stimulus payments for each eligible person. The first of those payments started going out on December 29th. You may have seen it pending in your account, but the funds officially became available Monday. The payments will continue to be sent through January 15th. But anyone eligible who isn't automatically sent the money by then will have to claim it on their 2020 tax return According to the IRS, paper checks or debit cards will be sent to those who don't already have a bank account on file with the IRS. Checks also began going out last week. People can check the status of both their first and second stimulus payments by using the Internal Revenue Service's Get My Payment Online tool. Some people may not receive the money the same way as in the first round. If you were sent a preloaded debit card last year, the payment will not be added to that card. They'll either receive a new card in the mail or a paper check. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Eligibility is largely based on income. Those earning less than $75,000 a year will get the full $600. The full payment will also go to heads of households earning less than $112,500 and married couples finally jointly earning less than $150,000 a year. They will also receive $600 per child under the age of 17. It's now 541, still 47 degrees. Coming up next, we take a look at how many people are choosing to upgrade their homes now that a lot of us are staying at home during this pandemic. Next week, we'll start releasing brand new episodes of KSAT Explains. That's our digital program that takes a deep dive into one topic every week. If you haven't watched it yet, you can stream any of our past shows on demand. And here's a look at some of the topics we covered in 2020. We have been trying to let you know this is what is happening to the black community with police. I feel pretty certain that not a lot of places are going to make it if something doesn't happen relatively soon. This footage, video footage, will help if the public can see a lot more of what we do and how we actually do it. in general would be better if we spent more on options. Everybody loves their sweet, sour, and spicy. Everybody loves it. To the little kids all the way to adults. Again, all those episodes are available to stream right now, ksat.com slash explains. You can also find the show on the KSAT TV app, available on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other streaming devices. In your morning consumer headlines, American Airlines, they are reporting it will not serve alcohol on its flights to and from Washington, D.C. The airline made the announcement saying flight attendants have reported, quote, politically motivated aggression towards other passengers and crew, end quote. American Airlines also plans to increase staffing at airports in the D.C. area. It says the policy change is a precautionary measure. Well, Carnival Cruise Lines and Princess Cruises beginning the new year with no stops in the U.S. The cruise companies have suspended all their sailings from U.S. ports until spring. Princess Cruises hopes to pick up its itineraries after May 14th. European trips are also on pause for now. Carnival has canceled its schedule through U.S. waters through the end of March. The cruise industry has been at a standstill since the pandemic forced it to end travel plans in the middle of March last year. Mountain Dew is kicking off the new year with the new dew. Check out Mountain Dew Major Melon, the first new permanent flavor in more than a decade. We're talking watermelon here, a truly transportive taste, or so the folks at Mountain Dew say. In fact, the company's VP says watermelon was the number one choice of flavors that they had fans test out. If you want to do the new dew, it's already on sale with a number of sizes to choose from, and there's a sugar-free option as well. 2020 had many of us spending more time in our homes than we ever thought possible. In this morning's Angie's List report, our Eric Hernandez highlights the home service trends that we can expect to continue into the new year. More than ever before, 2020 was the year of the home. They had become our schools, offices, gyms, and restaurants, and we've seen all of those changes reflected in how homeowners have invested in their homes. Here are some of the details from the recent State of Homes spending report. 
In 2020, the average household spending on home services rose to $13,000. It increased $4,000 from last year's survey. Breaking that spending down further across three key categories shows that home improvement spending was $8,305, home maintenance spending was $3,192, and home emergency spending was $1,640. With people spending more time in their homes, we're also seeing more wear and tear on those same homes. We found that home improvement spending per household was up $745 over last year. Spending more time in our homes is resulting in more awareness of their shortcomings as well as areas in need of improvement. But that's not the main reason people were spending more. The top reason for home improvement spending in this year's survey was to better suit our houses to our lifestyle. 41% of consumers gave this reason. This is compared to last year where the top reason for improving your home was to repair or replace damaged items. The increase in spending on our homes has been funded in part by a shift in our activities. Consumers spent less money dining out and traveling in 2020, and they took a lot of those savings and invested them in their home. We expect that trend to continue into early 2021. Consumers also seem to need a change of scenery, even as they stayed at home. We also saw a shift in the types of projects people were tackling in 2020. The top project this year was interior painting, which is a really cost-effective way to improve your home. Erica, if not in this case, at 12 News. 549. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. How are the roads looking this morning? Oh, Stephanie, Mark, things are looking okay right now, as you can see uh, on the screen here. We had some big delays on 1604, pretty much the entire stretch between 35 and Bandera, but right now, uh, things looking fine just to give you an idea of how smooth sailing and then further uh, on the west side between 151 and 35 uh, 15 minutes just about each way and here's a look at trans guide uh, i-10 at woodlawn looks okay as does 90 at zarzamor guys thank you samuel thank you hey mike your uh, picture matches your tie oh i didn't even think about that it kind of does <laughs> I'm still thinking it's kind of transportive, <laughs> like that Mountain Dew stuff. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I you, know. You've never seen Mountain Dew as transportive? Well, I guess it, uh, it's their marketing thing. You transportive? Know. Yeah. See to another place. Takes you to a different anyway. place. Anyway. Uh, yes, it's nice to have a tie that matches a, a KSAC Connect picture. Thank you for that. And we have got uh, another good sunset and sunrise in store today. So we're looking off to the east right now. No glow as of yet, but uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, just beautiful today. Grab a jacket this morning. It's not uh, it's not even down to normal right now. 47 degrees. Normal low is 40, but we will continue to drop down a couple of more notches, although the wind keeps the atmosphere sort of uh, stirred up just a little bit. So the, the coldest air, which is the densest, it keeps it from really settling down to the surface, but we are going to get much colder the next couple of mornings and then stay colder in the afternoons. 36 is the cool spot right now up the road in Kerrville and dew point temperatures. Again, we had them uh, getting up into the low 60s, upper 50s, low 60s yesterday. There's a ton of humidity and now with that front that moved through yesterday, we've got really dry air and this dry air is definitely going to be staying in place for the next couple of days. All right, once the satellite loops back on through here the past 12 hours, there were some of the leftover storms had some uh, storms, especially off to the east as expected yesterday. Now nothing is going on out there again upstream. That's what's in store for the next few days. Nothing, maybe an extra cloud or two here or there. And look at how this uh, system moving through a lot of snow up there in Arkansas, Missouri, and even uh, western Tennessee. But that's going to continue to work its way on out of here. So it was a really close call. Now we have another close call coming on in here by Sunday. So we'll start to see we've got beautiful weather today, tomorrow and sunshine to start off on Saturday. And then the clouds are going to move in here fairly quickly. A good chance of rain overnight Saturday into Sunday. This, of course, by Sunday morning is all rain. Then throughout the day, we're going to start to see some of this colder air work its way on in here. But again, this is up around Gillespie County, and this is the same computer model I've been looking at the past couple of days. And this is not anywhere near as far south as what it was, The uh, what this model is indicating as far as any frozen precipitation mixed in. So northern portions of the hill country, I think we do see a couple of, uh, you know, some wet snowflakes mixed in, maybe a little bit of uh, sleet mixed in with some of the rain and this is going to be the situation in through uh, the evening hours of Sunday. So it's going to be a wet and cold day on Sunday. 
some clouds overnight, then we're going to start to clear out and another shot of cold air comes in here for the first part of next week. So after a big, big warm up the past few days, it's going to be cold and getting colder. 57 degrees today at noon. Just to kind of put it in perspective. That's our high tomorrow. And then today we do get up to a 62 normal high temperature. Again, plenty of sunshine. Next few days today, tomorrow look fantastic. Saturday is going to be a nice day. It's going to be cloudy. Uh, 54 for high temperature, cloudy and cool. So if you have not yet gotten around to taking down the Christmas lights, guilty as charged. Uh, <laughs> the next couple <laughs> of days, more sunshine, but Saturday, again, cloudy. Do it Saturday because Sunday is not going to be a day for it because it will be wet on Sunday. Or right. you can do the indoor stuff on Sunday if, if you have okay. to wait that outdoor long. Outdoor Saturday, indoor Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good plan. I, always the perfect optimist over there. I love that. Thanks, Mike. I'm <laughs> glad that we are both together and not taking our Christmas decorations <laughs> down yet. Yeah, by 53, 47 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, five, six, three, fireball eight, and daily four, seven, two, three, one, fireball five. Cash five numbers six, 14, 24, 29, 35, lotto Texas, six, 14, 17, 32, 44, 45. Powerball jackpots up to 470 million dollars. Those numbers 1, 20, 22, 60, 66, Powerball three, power play, Three mega millions is up to four hundred ninety million dollars. Welcome back to GMSA. One in five adults will experience mental illness this year. It is a hardship millions of Americans live with, but don't really talk about. Join us for our virtual health awareness, mental health awareness town hall. That's coming up Wednesday, January 27th at 2 p.m. We'll have a panel of experts to explain mental health and how you can make a difference. Help us fight the stigma. For more information, visit ksatcommunity.com. Well, we have uh, one and a half hours down, one more hour of news, weather and traffic coming up right now. Millions of Americans turning to alcohol and pills to manage their stress, trauma and pain. Just ahead on GMSA, why one woman opened a bar to help addicts quit. Trans guide right now, if you're headed out the door, there's I-10 at Woodlawn, I-35 at St. Mary's. Traffic really is starting to pick up there. Highway 90 at Zarzamora, 10 at the Y. Samuel King is standing by with a live report. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. We'll get to weather and traffic in a few minutes, but this morning there are still serious questions that remain after supporters of President Trump rioted at the U.S. Capitol building yesterday. Right now, we know that four people have died and at least 52 have been arrested after a mob stormed the Capitol building, forcing Congress to evacuate. Let's go ahead and go to Karen Kafa for the latest. Karen, good morning. Washington waking up this morning after an overnight curfew during which Congress finished the job that they had started yesterday afternoon, certifying Joe Biden's win over President Donald Trump in the November election. It is work that was interrupted when pro-Trump rioters stormed the Capitol, creating a deadly situation. After a day of violence on Capitol Hill and weeks of refusing to concede, President Donald Trump released a statement early Thursday morning agreeing to an orderly transfer of power, reading in part, even though I totally disagree with the outcome of the election and the facts bear me out, nevertheless, there will be an orderly transition on January 20th. The statement after Congress's certification of Joe Biden's win over Trump in November's election. Joseph R. Biden Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. The proceedings, which began Wednesday afternoon, were halted by the first breach of the U.S. Capitol since the British attacked it during the War of 1812. The ugly scenes carried on for hours. Smashed windows, smoke grenades, an armed standoff at the front door of the House and protesters on the Senate floor. We will not be kept out of this chamber by thugs, mobs or threats. A short video released by Trump during the violence told rioters to go home, but mostly repeated lies about his November loss. And when it's over, it is over. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris 
are lawfully elected. Biden, now less than two weeks away from inauguration, condemned the violence. It's not protest. It's insurrection. The world's watching. And Biden is expected to have more to say about yesterday's events at the Capitol at an event later this afternoon where he will introduce members of his incoming justice team, including his pick for attorney general, Merrick Garland. Live in Washington this morning, I'm Karen Kaifa. Now back to you. Elected leaders across the country have been expressing their views after the events that unfolded yesterday, including local representatives. Our Stephen Cavazos live downtown with why Representative Lloyd Doggett believes those acts have left a lasting impact. Stephen. Well, good morning, Mark. We've been hearing from leaders across the nation, including some here at home and all sharing the same shock and concern. Now, uh, again, one even calling the riots a lasting damage to our civic fabric and to America's world standing. Now, those are the words from U.S. Representative Lloyd, Do uh, Lloyd Doggett. Now, in a statement sent out, he said yesterday was a shocking and tragic day for America. The Democratic rep from Texas also condemned President Donald Trump for, quote, feeding his supporter a steady diet of lies. Now, however, Republicans like Senator Ted Cruz share the same concerns over the riots. He called them, quote, despicable and an act of terrorism, end quote. Now, here at home, prayers are being sent up to our nation's capital. A small prayer vigil will be held here at San Fernando Cathedral later today at 1. Now, Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller says that the riots yesterday were concerning. We'll be hearing more from his statement coming up. Reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Taking a look outside with live hand this morning, much different than yesterday morning. Yeah, right, mid 40s, Michael. Yeah, uh, we're not quite down to normal yet, but we've been dropping down a few more degrees, a couple of more degrees just in the past hour. We don't have the humidity like we had yesterday. We don't have rain that front moved through, cleared everything out and get ready for a couple of beautiful, beautiful days waiting for that glow. No, it's my imagination. It's not glowing yet for the uh, the sunrise, but it's going to be spectacular this morning. Temperatures again, 45 here in town. Normal low is 40. I think we'll continue to drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours and hit our coldest just as the sun is coming up or right after that. And we've got a couple of 30s now. Uh, Rio Medina, Hondo 36 in Kerrville. It will get colder, though, in the next couple of uh, days because it's got a sort of a reinforcing push of cold air coming in here tonight. And so it'll be cold colder tomorrow morning and staying colder the next couple of days. More on that in a second. Mountain Cedar. Oh, goodness gracious. 20, let's call it 22,000. Just round up and uh, that doesn't even take into account the windy conditions we had yesterday. Got another windy day in store today, so you know it's going to be shaking up those trees. So I think we dropped down to 40 this morning and uh, wind will again pick up as the afternoon rolls on and a lot of sunshine all day long. Just a beautiful day. You want to keep a jacket handy. 57 at noon. Then we top off at a normal high temperature right in the low 60s. Mm, you know, it's one of those iffy jacket kind of things. If you're in the shadows, you need one sunshine. No, but then again, it's going to cool off very quickly once the sun goes down tonight. Weekend forecast, um, you don't want to grab an extra blanket because it's going to be cold and damp over the weekend, especially Sunday, and we'll talk about maybe some mixed precipitation up in the hill country. Time saver traffic right now, Samuel King, and it doesn't seem like you've had a whole heck of a lot to talk about so far this no, morning. No, not uh, not this morning. The quietest morning so far uh, this week. So okay. far, of course, that's subject to change, of course, but we do have this construction to remind you about. Uh, this is I-10, uh, both directions between Lock and Terra Parkway and Ralph Fair Road, some closures of the HOV lanes and some of the outside main lanes as they do some work out there as well. Taking a look at some travel times this morning, green all the way around the area. 281 from Belverde, uh, 26 minutes, uh, 20 minutes on 90 from Castroville, and 29 minutes from Floresville if you're coming in to downtown San Antonio. And taking a look at Transguide here, I-10 at the Y, things looking fine this morning, as does 35 at Powell. Things picking up a little bit, but things look good this morning. Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. To the pandemic, local health officials report 2,097 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. Four more people have died from the virus, and Mayor Ron Nirenberg says a seven-day moving average is up to 1,568 cases a day. He also says that more than 1,300 people remain in the hospital. 383 are in the ICU, and nearly 200 people are on ventilators. Only 10% of staffed hospital beds are available at local hospitals. San Antonio police are asking for your help solving two murder investigations this morning. First one happened back on December 15th. 
police say they did a welfare check when they were told 62 year old Michael Broadus was not answering his phone. However, police say they found Broadus dead with multiple gunshot wounds in his home in the 300 block of Belmont. Officers say they do not have any suspects at this time. San Antonio police are also investigating the murder of 25 year old Gilbert Rocha. They say it happened in November of 2016 at the corner of Hebner and military. Police say Rocha was sitting in the back seat of an SUV when another car pulled up and a passenger in that car opened fire. Officers described it as a road rage incident. If you have any information on either of these cases, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. Friends, family and church members have rallied around four children who survived a crash Sunday that killed their parents. The youngest and oldest, ages 5 and 16, were hospitalized. The family's bishop says all of them, in his words, are deeply shaken physically and emotionally. Their father, 50-year-old Craig Smith, worked at Fort Sam Houston when they were taken so suddenly. The bishop says the family faced now with unforeseen expenses. I'm confident that we'll be able to raise funds sufficient to help meet those needs now and in the future. Lotus police say it appears the family pulled out of a Dairy Queen in front of an oncoming truck. The crash is still under investigation. They say including the possibility speed might have been a factor, but right now no charges are pending. And in case you missed it, the Democratic Party is poised to have control of the Senate for the next two years. ABC News called the remaining Senate runoff race in Georgia for John Ossoff. Now, taking a look at the balance of power, that means the Republican Party will have 50 seats and the Democratic Party and the Democratic-leaning independents will have 50 combined. That means Vice President-elect Kamala Harris will have the tie-breaking vote when she is sworn in on January 20th. Raphael Warnock already was declared the winner of the other race. Both Democratic candidates won with with more than half percent margin, meaning there will be no recounts in Georgia. It's now just about nine minutes past the hour, 45 degrees. And a scholarship program helping students go to college and keep the state beautiful. We're gonna learn more about the Don't Mess With Texas contest. Pandemic impacting businesses around the world. We've already talked about airlines. We're gonna talk about changes happening in the fashion industry because of the coronavirus. And it's starting to feel like January again. Taking a look outside with live cam, 45 degrees this morning. And we're going to have some cold mornings coming up. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. Welcome back and good morning. The pandemic has impacted all industries financially and how they approach shoppers. And the fashion industry is no exception. Our Sarah Costa explains some of the changes that may stick around forever. When compared to frontline service industries fighting to keep people alive and fed, the fashion industry has taken a backseat during this pandemic. So what does this mean for the fashion world in the future? The pandemic pushed pause on the fashion industry across the globe. It's an industry that is both a creative mecca and one of the world's most significant fiscal heavyweights. The industry deterioration would see a big impact on global economy, furloughing or causing unemployment status to millions of artists, designers, seamstresses and more. Forbes claims that store closures and down sales led to Western fashion brands canceling over $2.8 billion in orders from Bangladeshi suppliers. At least 1.2 million workers in Bangladesh are said to have been impacted by these cancellations, according to Forbes. Dozens of luxury brands have stepped up to the plate like Tiffany & Company, Prada and Dulce & Cabana, all rallying and donating to hospitals and those at the center of the crisis. Fashion weeks across the globe were either canceled or went virtual. Physical stores closed at the start of the pandemic, and some companies' brick and mortar stores may not recover. In the luxury sector, brands are predicted to experience a $10 billion decline in luxury sales, and overall, the industry could lose $30 to $40 billion in sales. Back to you. 614. Let's go ahead and check back with Samuel King. Are the roads still okay? <laughs> still okay uh, at this moment. Things uh, looking uh, pretty uh, quiet so far. The quietest morning of the week so far, actually. And we're going to have this construction up here uh, in New Braunfels later today. Uh, one northbound lane of 35 at FM 306. 
Uh, that begins at 9 to 3. They had this going on yesterday, too. They're placing a crash cushion there, so that's some important work to do. And we did get a viewer question about uh, the travel times that we show sometimes. For instance, uh, 26 minutes in uh, from New Braunfels from 35 and 24 minutes uh, from Bernie. And one viewer, the viewer was asking where in Bernie, for instance, do we measure this and where is it going? Well, it is going downtown San Antonio, so not to uh, 1604, 410. It's going to downtown. But Bernie, for instance, it's measured at I-10 just outside of town. So once you're hitting uh, I-10, actually we looked at it as actually by the HEB plus there uh, on I-10 there close to uh, close to that exit there on uh, I-10. So that's something uh, to keep in mind when we're talking about this, maybe not exactly the downtown area of some of our outlying areas, but where you hit the highway in a lot of these towns, that's not the downtown part, but it is going into the heart of San Antonio. And looking at Transguide, speaking of San Antonio, uh, well, actually, uh, New Braunfels 35 and 725 looks okay, and 1604 at Wiseman Boulevard looks okay this morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. We definitely need a jacket out there for the bus stop, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you do. Uh, and, you know, one, it's one of those days, kids probably won't need a jacket later on this afternoon if you're in the, uh, the sunshine, but you get in the shadows, and it's going to be kind of uh, a little bit nippy. And then, plus, it's also going to be on the breezy side uh, later on today, so that'll sort of add to it. And then you'll definitely need it handy really throughout the foreseeable future going into next week. We're at 45 right now. I think we drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours, so clear and chilly. We're not seeing a lot of freezing temperatures, if at all, right now, uh, maybe in some of the low-lying, outlying areas of the hill country. And then after school today, 62 degrees. So basically our temperatures are going to be normals, right? Oh, darn it all. There's my Wi-Fi problem. Well, we'll get to that picture in just a second. Take a look outside right now with the live cam and this sunrise. Mm, we seeing a glow yet? Nope, not. Yeah, maybe. Wishful thinking. Uh, as far as temperatures, I was talking about how today basically normal on the high and the low end of the scale. And this is the coldest period of the year historically, the 30 year average. And then by the 13th, we just go up uh, one degree on each end of the scale. And through the 1st of March, it's basically about two degrees every two weeks on each end of the scale. So by the 1st of March, normal high temperature is 70 and normal low temperature is 47 degrees. But what's interesting is once we start getting into March, then that increase starts to go up a little bit more. So every couple of weeks it's about three almost uh, four degrees or so and of course we peak right around the uh, the first of August but uh, we'll worry about that when we get to it 45 degrees here in town in 36 in Kerrville 38 both Rio Medina and Hondo and dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere we've got this really really dry air in place we've got clear skies but we do have a little bit of a breeze and so that tends to keep the air stirred up somewhat for the coldest temperatures you want all three of these ingredients no wind clear skies and dry air, but still obviously with this dry air that's allowing these temperatures to uh, drop down this morning. And after that front moved on through, swept everything on out of here, we did have some uh, decent thunderstorms off to the east late yesterday, but it has cleared things out quite nicely. And uh, boy, it was a close call with the wintry precipitation up there in southern, uh, Missis excuse me, southern Missouri, as well as Arkansas. But there's nothing upstream for the next couple of days. Now, I mentioned a close call. Then we have another close call coming up by Sunday as far as any uh, wintry precipitation. 57 at noon today. Sunny skies. Wind's going to start to pick up out of the northwest about 15, 20 miles per hour, maybe a little bit gusty at times. 62 for a high temperature. Jacket's not a bad idea, sweater. And then tomorrow, 35 starting off. So we are definitely going to be on the cold side, down close to freezing by Saturday morning. And we stay only in the upper and then mid and lower 50s. A lot of clouds Saturday. Rain on Sunday. Sunday's going to be one of those kind of raw days. We're only 52 degrees. And we'll have some showers around here, maybe mixed in with a little bit of frozen precipitation in northern portions of the hill country. So just a little bit here and there. Sounds like Sunday is going to be well north of San Antonio. Yeah, uh, it, it looks like one of the models been watching the past couple of days is kind of pulling it back up to the north just a little bit more. So still four days away, so we'll still keep eyes on it. So. And still cold in San Antonio. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and the wet, you know, the wet makes it feel even colder. Yes, it, it really does get you. Thank you, Mike. 619, 45 degrees. And coming up, we are getting deeper look into Operation Warp Speed this morning. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. 
Win with Circle K and GMSA. All right, I brought in Ensure Max Protein to give you the protein you need. With less of the sugar, you don't. I'll take that. 30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar. Ensure Max Protein with nutrients to support immune health. Ordinary tissues burn when Theo blows. So Dad bought Puffs Plus Lotion and rescued his nose. With up to 50% more lotion, Puffs springs soothing softness and relief. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. A must in your medicine cabinet. Less sick days. Cold coming on? Zycam is clinically proven to shorten colds. Highly recommended. Zyfans love Zycam's unique zinc formula. It shortens colds. Zycam Zinc Back Cold. Ocean Spray works with nature every day to keep you healthy. In this morning's GMA First Look, up close with the frontline heroes fighting COVID-19. It looked like a bomb went off. ABC News getting a first-hand look at a day in the life of Los Angeles EMT workers. Their ambulances stacked up outside overflowing hospitals as they wait for beds to open up. How long have you had to wait with patients in this parking lot today? Five, six hours, yeah. but yesterday I was at San Dimas Hospital, 17 hours in the back of a rig with a semi-critical patient. I have limited resources, and if they're really going downhill, there may not even be a spot to put them in the hospital. I was actually deployed to Hurricane Rita and Hurricane Katrina, and this is by far the worst disaster I've ever been involved in. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more from these first responders, plus the very latest on the federal government's and calls National to Guard speed up vaccinations. Really With your GMA First Look, uh, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Every year, about 362 million pieces of litter accumulate on Texas roads. That's why a special scholarship is available for Texas high school seniors to help make a difference in our great state. It's called the Don't Mess With Texas Scholarship Contest. Applications now available for the 2021 Don't Mess With Texas, Texas Scholarship Contest recognizes Texas high school seniors taking an active role in litter prevention in their school or community. Any high school senior currently attending public, private, or homeschool can submit an application. However, you need to plan to attend an accredited college or university in this upcoming fall semester. The contest will award $9,000 in scholarships to three winners in May. All you have to do is visit don'tmesswithtexas.org. Applications are due on March 31st by 5 p.m. that day. And remember, you can be fined $500 for every time you litter in Texas. If, you, uh, if what you toss weighs more than five pounds, you may have to pay up to $2,000. And it's not just cigarette butts, we're, cigarette butts we're talking about. We're also talking about other trash things like apple cores and banana peels. That's considered litter as well. And you can learn more right now on KSET.com. San Antonio Spurs back in action tonight to take on LeBron James and the Lakers in L.A. Tip-off scheduled for 9 o'clock San Antonio time. You can watch that game on Fox Sports Southwest or tune into GMSA tomorrow for highlights and reaction. And time now is 625 and 45 degrees for now. More reaction is coming in this morning to the riots at the U.S. Capitol yesterday. We'll learn what local leaders are saying about the extraordinary events. And cutting back on alcohol may be a top priority for many people in the new year. In our next half hour, we're going to see how one woman actually opened a bar for people to quit alcohol rather than drink it. And Trans Guide right now, 10 at the Y downtown looking great. Lots of traffic, 35 in Powell. We'll see if there are any major accidents or slowdowns with Samuel King coming up. home are being sent up to our nation's capital. More on that coming up. A violent attack on the U.S. Capitol to stop lawmakers from ratifying Joe Biden's win in the presidential election. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details coming up. And the changes arrived. It's much cooler this morning. If you're just now waking up, we're in the mid 40s out at the airport. Mike is standing by with your forecast. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, January 7th. 
We have all your top stories coming up, including the latest out of Washington, D.C. But first, a look at weather with Mike Osterhage. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, grab a jacket before you head out the door. We are almost down to a normal low temperature. Of course, after that front moved on through there, and we are now starting to see just a little bit of the faint glow of the sunrise. There's the planet Venus. Beautiful, and it is going to be gorgeous all day long. Nice, great temperatures, low humidity out there. Dew point is down to 26. It's about, uh, oh gosh, um, 25, 30, in some cases close to 35 degrees lower than what it was yesterday. So the air is really dried out. Wind out of the northwest at nine miles per hour. So just a little hint of a kind of a, a nip to some of these temperatures with that breeze out there. Mountain cedar, oh, almost 22,000. And again, that didn't even take into account the windy conditions we had yesterday. We've got another windy day in store today. So the updated count's going to be coming out in about, uh, oh, say 45 minutes or so. Sunny, beautiful today. You might want to keep a jacket handy or at least a, a sweater handy. And then it's going to cool off pretty quickly later on uh, when the sun starts to go down tonight. And then tomorrow, an even colder start because we get another little shove of cooler air coming on in here. And then it's going to be staying cooler in the afternoon, only in the uh, mid upper 50s and that's going to be the case through the weekend but we will have more clouds over the weekend some rain on Sunday and there is still the possibility that that's going to be mixed with a little bit of uh, maybe some sleet or some wet snow in northern portions of the hill country and it's going to be staying even colder after that for next week details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes time saver traffic right now Samuel King and uh well, map looks pretty good. Nothing going on. Yeah, nothing really going on. Some construction here or there uh, right now and later today. But other than that, things are pretty quiet at the moment. Taking a look at Fredericksburg Road here, 13 minutes between the Hebner and Woodlawn, 14 minutes going the <coughs> other way. So even in that spot, not much uh, traffic in the area right now. I-10 at the Y, uh, things looking okay as 35 and Powell. So uh, things so far so good this morning. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. Joint session of Congress ratified the Electoral College results very early this morning. Latest confirmation of President-elect Joe Biden's win in the 2020 presidential election. However, it came after a violent day at the U.S. Capitol where supporters of President Donald Trump stormed the Capitol building, forcing Congress to evacuate. And this morning, four people have died and 52 have been arrested. ABC's Faith Abube has the very latest. Overnight, a joint session of Congress ratifying the Electoral College votes in the presidential election. The move certifying President-elect Joe Biden's decisive win as he prepares to take office in less than two weeks. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be the president and the vice president. And it comes after a tumultuous day at the U.S. Capitol. A symbol of U.S. democracy, attacked by violent pro-Trump mobs and left in disarray. The image is hard to watch. Demonstrators scaling walls, breaking through security barriers, smashing windows, and storming restricted areas of the U.S. Capitol, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office. The Trump supporters forcing lawmakers to take cover in fear of their lives. Pictures show armed Capitol Police outnumbered, guns drawn and barricading doors as the chaos unfolded. D.C. police telling ABC News one woman and two men suffered medical emergencies and later died. Another woman shot and killed during a standoff inside the Capitol. The chaos forcing lawmakers to break from what should have been a quiet day, ratifying the Electoral College votes in the presidential election. Instead, as the joint session of Congress convened, President Trump urging his supporters during a rally to head to the Capitol. You'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. As the supporters breached the building, multiple sources tell ABC News Trump rejected calls to bring in the National Guard, only signing off after White House officials intervened for the sake of the country. Three people inside the White House resigning over the violent display. And now some talk, according to ABC News sources, among cabinet members to remove Trump himself from office. Lawmakers from both sides of the political aisle, shaken but undeterred, returning to the chamber overnight to finish their work. And soon after Congress certified the results, President Trump released a statement saying he wasn't happy with the outcome, but there will be a smooth transition of power on January 20th. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Prayers here at home will be sent up to the nation's capital. A small prayer service scheduled at San Fernando Keith Cathedral later today. Stephen Cavazza is live there with more. Stephen, what has been the Archbishop's reaction to all of this? 
Well, good morning, Mark. The Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra's reaction is that great concern. He says, quote, these are dire times, end quote. Now, in a statement sent out yesterday, the Archbishop said, quote, he was saddened by the shocking events this afternoon, which are a wound to the soul of our country, end quote. Now, the Archbishop went on to say the country has seen too much violence in recent months from political violence, racial violence, and even the violence caused by the COVID-19 virus. Now, he's calling for peace and for people to think and have concerns for others. Now, as we've been saying throughout this show, yesterday's riots have been widely condemned by many elected leaders across the country and here at home. Now, again, that prayer vigil is expected to happen here at the San Fernando Cathedral later today at one. The Archbishop is also calling for peace and also reconciliation in our nation over the coming days. Reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Two people suspected of being part of a stolen checks ring may have to pay with their freedom. San Antonio Police and the U.S. Secret Service worked together to uncover this operation, which led to their arrest. Our Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. Now, Katrina, we're talking about a ring. Do they think there might be other people involved? Yes, in fact, they say they know there were other people involved. And based on what it says in the arrest affidavit, investigators also say there were lots of victims both in Bear County and beyond. The two suspects are accused of stealing thousands of dollars in a scheme that dates back at least to October. 18-year-old Kennedy Price and 19-year-old Felipe Salazar both face charges that include money laundering, forgery, and fraud. The arrest affidavit says... They promised people quick cash if they allowed them to deposit those stolen checks into their bank accounts. Investigators say all of the transactions were conducted through ATMs, and it was with ATM surveillance photos that they were able to identify uh, those suspects. Now, the victims in this case were various people in Bear County and beyond as far away as Austin. They also had their checks stolen. Uh, they say they had their checks stolen and then cashed without their knowledge. Now, it sounds like there could be more people who are arrested to come, but we don't know yet whether that includes any of those so-called accomplices, the people who willingly allowed their bank accounts to be used in all of this. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. To the pandemic, the CDC says there are more than 50 known cases in the U.S. of the coronavirus variant first seen in the U.K. Most of the cases have been identified in California and Florida, but others have been found in Colorado, Georgia, and New York. But the CDC says there are likely more cases in the United States that they do not know about. CDC officials says the variant appears to spread more easily, but there is no evidence that it is more deadly. Meanwhile, the CDC says it's seen 29 cases of severe allergic reactions to COVID-19 vaccines. That comes from a report that analyzed the first 2 million injections. Of those 29 who had the reaction, 17 of them reported having a history of severe reactions to medications. All of the 29 people had a reaction within minutes and were immediately treated by healthcare professionals and all of them have been re recovered. The CDC says the rate of severe reactions is higher than in flu vaccines, but the reactions are still quite rare. And time now is 6.30 a.m., 45 degrees for now. Millions of Americans turning to alcohol and pills to manage stress, trauma, and pain. Just ahead, a why one woman opened a bar to help addicts quit. Six forty-two. For many people, giving up alcohol, at least cutting back, is at the top of their New Year's resolutions, and for good reason. More than half of Americans consider themselves drinkers, and millions are addicted to alcohol. As Erica Hernandez reports, giving up your addiction can be difficult, but one woman in Cleveland, Ohio, has found a way to bring people together so they can help each other stay sober. I started drinking when I was about 14. I was real bad on crack and heroin. I know what it's like to be destitute and on the streets. I got to a spot where I truly wanted to commit suicide. It was either get sober or die for Tracy Barnes. Now 12 years later, in a 12-step program, Tracy has become an advocate for addicts, creating one of the first sober cafes. Rise Above Cafe is a place where men and women can hang out, take classes, grab a bite to eat, and talk to other recovering addicts. My whole life revolved around 
using drugs, getting drugs, figuring out how to get money, doing, you know, my whole life revolved around that. And when I came into sobriety, I didn't know what to do with all of this time on my hands. It is a trigger for me, just boredom, loneliness. When I come here, I shoot pool, I shoot darts, I talk recovery. Tracy, now a licensed chemical dependency counselor, says it's imperative for people in recovery to have a safe, substance-free place to go. We stay away from actual bars where there's alcohol. Finding a peer support group is essential. Without a foundation and a support group of people that have your back and they're telling you you're doing the right thing or you're doing the wrong thing, or how would you ever know? Experts suggest during COVID, join the social media sober group. Also prepare your story. When someone asks why you don't drink, have an answer ready, like you have to get up early or you quit for health reasons. Arm yourself with alcohol-free alternative drinks and think of yourself as a sober rebel. Change your mindset from I can't have a drink to I don't want a drink. And remember, there is help if you want it. Well, addicts and alcoholics who are trying to be sober um, don't have to feel alone. If you need more reasons to quit, here are the top ones backed by science. First, alcohol will kill you and is actually the cause of 88,000 deaths each year. Now, alcohol also is at the root of up to 10 types of cancer, especially liver, colon, rectal, and breast cancers. And most importantly, if you abuse alcohol, there's a 50% greater risk increase that your kids will drink too. Erica Fernandez, KSAT 12 News. If you need help, there are resources you can access right now. You can contact the Addiction Hotline anytime at the number on your screen. That number, 855-947-3389. Let's check traffic right now at 644. Here's Samuel King. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, things are looking okay uh, on the roads. So let's take a quick look at TransGuide here, 35 at Powell. You see traffic starting to build, but it is flowing. And so a look at travel times in 35 inside Loop 410 between 410 and downtown San Antonio to the northeast, 10 minutes each way, and then to the southwest, 10 minutes each way as well. So things looking fine there this morning, guys. A great commute so far. Thank you, Samuel. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. Tell us about your friends behind that, you. I love that picture. Have you ever yeah. seen one of these things, uh, the white herons? And they, oh, yeah. you know, the head, they just barely creep through and, and head doesn't even move. They're cool better picture. fishermen than some of us. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. And I know the thing couldn't wait for, you know, to pose, but if you can, try and turn your phone sideways. But, uh, boy, that's a great picture. Thank you very much for the, uh, the KSAT Connect picture there. Oh, speaking of great pictures, the planet Venus and, wow, the glow of the sunrise this morning. That's pretty, and it's going to stay beautiful all day long. The uh, humidity obviously dropped down quite a bit yesterday after that front moved on through here. It's going to be staying low all the way through the weekend and then into next week. It will come up a little bit on Sunday, but not much. This is when we have our next chance at some rain. So here's what the computer model looks like short term throughout the rest of today. Nothing out there but blue skies, plenty of sunshine, great sunrise, good looking sunset. Same thing tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe just a couple of clouds uh, tomorrow morning, you know, one or two of them scooching by here and there. Then we get into Saturday, different computer model, and this is going a little bit further into the future. Uh, a lot of clouds on Saturday. Rain will start to work its way into the picture uh, late Saturday night, overnight into Sunday. So we'll have some of these showers around here and even a couple of decent downpours around the area. But notice as of Saturday morning, anything that would be frozen is even above that banner, well north of our viewing area. That colder air is going to try to sink down here to the south. And by the afternoon hours, it may uh, kind of come into northern portions of the hill country. This model is the one we've been showing the past couple of days. And a couple of things to take away from it. It is a lot slower bringing the colder air in here. It kind of holds off on the colder air coming on in. And it doesn't get as far south with the, the precipitation around here. Because yesterday, this model had some of this uh, precipitation even in the late morning hours up there in northern Bear County. Now it's confined well up there further up to the north and again later in the day on Sunday and that'll be sticking around in through the early evening hours uh, up there, say Blanco County, Gillespie County, parts of the hill country, a little bit of uh, maybe some light snow mixed in with some of that rain or even some uh, sleet. And then in the overnight hours, things are going to continue to clear on out. We get another shot of colder air coming on in here and so we'll definitely be staying on the colder side even in the first part of next week. So today, 57 degrees at noon, good looking day, 
keep a jacket handy. It's not a bad idea. 62 at uh, about four or five o'clock this afternoon. Normal high temperature. I think we dropped down a few more degrees from where we are right now. We're at 45 right now, so we start off normal, end up normal. Then tomorrow we stay on the cooler side, down to 35 in the morning, only 57 in the afternoon. Another good looking day. Close to freezing Saturday morning. Clouds will increase during the day and Sunday is going to be cold. It is going to be wet, maybe something mixed up in northern portions of the hill country. And then we still stay down close to freezing to start off uh, first half of next week. Grilled cheese on Sunday. Yes, indeed. If we do see any snow, people can find KSAT Connect. It's inside right. our weather app, right? Correct. Okay, the yes. Weather Authority app. Yeah, you got to download the Weather Authority app, and then there's uh, down at the bottom it says mm -hmm. pin, and you can go that yeah. direction. So you got to have the app first. You have to of all, jump so. through a few minor hoops, but you'll figure it out. 648, 45 degrees. And if you would rather be fishing, listen up. Tomorrow on Good Morning San Antonio, we're going to tell you about a special program that can reward you with some big prizes if you reel in some big catches in Texas. Outside with live cam. And looking towards downtown, nada, but the sun is starting to come up over South Texas. Top stories coming up right here on GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA on a Thursday morning, of course, we will start with those events that happened at the nation's capital. The chaos not stopping lawmakers, though, from doing their work, officially confirming Joe Biden as our next president. That angry mob storming the Capitol, taking over the building, sending lawmakers and staffers fleeing. Some had evacuated, but others had to hide out. We're going to talk to some of the folks who were stuck in the building and we'll speak to them live. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Elected leaders from across our country and here at home continue to express their concerns following yesterday's riots at our nation's capital. Now, Senator Ted Cruz called the riots, quote, despicable and an act of terrorism, end quote. While other leaders like U.S. Rep Lloyd Doggett says it was a shocking and tragic day for America. And here at home, elected leaders also sounded off. Mayor Ron Ehrenberg said, quote, we must reject and rise above these violent acts, end quote. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salasad says he was disheartened, but wanted to assure local residents that Bear County facilities, staff and processes are protected. Now, later today, a small prayer vigil will be held here at San Fernando Cathedral. That'll be happening later today at one. Reporting from downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. The United States' battle against COVID-19 is far from over. It's not a home run yet because we don't really have the kinds of drugs where you give it that can stop the virus in its tracks. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's ensemble forecast projects as many as 438,000 people in the U.S. could die from COVID-19 by the end of the month. Some Nevada funeral homes are running out of space to store bodies and are using refrigerated trailers. It's unfortunate. Um, it's something that I never uh, would ever have believed in my career. I would ever have to, to be dealing with this. CDC officials say a variant of the virus, first found in the UK, has infected at least 52 people in the US. What it does, according to the Brits, is that it makes it easier for the virus to spread from person to person. So it is a virus that is, in, in many respects, more transmissible. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, is also concerned about another version of the virus, first identified in South Africa, which may lessen the effectiveness of COVID-19 antibody treatments. It is a little bit more complicated because some of those mutations might have a negative impact on the efficacy of some of the monoclonal antibodies that are used. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Five till right now. Let's go ahead and check in again with Samuel King. How are the roads looking now? Uh, things still looking okay on the roads. Lots of green on the map. Reminder, we have this construction out on I-10 West between La Cantera Parkway and Ralph Fair Road. The HOV lanes and the main lanes uh, closed off. A part of the main lanes closed off uh, through Friday, uh, 9 to 3 again to today. I'm taking a look at some travel times in the area. 24 minutes coming in from Bernie on I-10 right now, so things look good there. 29 minutes from Seguin, 26 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels. And a look at Transguide 281 at the quarry looking fine this morning. Mike?
This is, I think, even prettier picture than what we've seen with these great sunrises before. Just the distinct colors there, and there is still that little dot right there is Venus. 46 now here in town, close to freezing in Kerrville right now. 36 Rio Medina, and uh, throughout the day, it's going to be a good-looking day. 62 for a high temperature, and it's going to be uh, chilly, beautiful, colder tomorrow. Cloudy over the weekend, some rain on Sunday, maybe something mixed well up to the north and staying on the uh, cold side into next week. But we have to leave you with this beautiful view. It is beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As we wait for the colder weather. Yes. Thank <laughs> and thank you for joining us today. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. Good Morning America is next.